Well, come back, lords and ladies. So we're going to be playing a little um, story game called Sakura Spirit. There's not really a lot of action. It's more of a story mode thing. So if you uh, enjoy sitting back, listening, and watching a story go uh, and unfold, then this is the thing for you. I'm going to do the entire thing on this. There's another one I have called Fading Hearts, but there's more selection in it. So hopefully we'll be able to enjoy this. Let's get started, shall we? Start game. Every person has a dream they wish to pursue. Yet, as people grow up, they often come to realize the truth. Dreams are nothing more than fairy tales. At least, that's what most people say. Then what about those who end up accomplishing their dreams? Are they merely incredibly lucky? Every man has a dream he wishes to accomplish, says Dad. <laughs> However, there is something really important you should know, my boy. <laughs> a real man doesn't give up on his dream, no matter how what overwhelming challenges he may have to face, mate. Yeah, right. <laughs> I still remember those foolish words my dad used to say to me, but despite their silly nature, I found myself inspired by them. Ever since I was a young child, I've been interested in martial arts. <laughs> it didn't matter whether I watched a match on television or watched a manga about some heroic martial artists. It always uh, been my dream to become a martial artist one day. Of course, it was a bit of a childish uh, of me to think that I would become a hero simply by learning martial arts. Uh, even though I understood that superheroes were nothing more than a figment of my imagination, I still understood, uh, I still had the desire uh, to use my strength for the sake of others. My name is Gyushin Takaro, a 17-year-old rising judo star, and no, that's not me bragging. I'm actually about to take part in a tournament two weeks from now that could make or break my career on an international level. <laughs> of course, I was excited about the opportunity to finally accomplish my dreams and represent my country at a sport that I loved. But the same excitement also made me feel incredibly nervous. And while those worrisome thoughts haunted my mind, a familiar uh, res a voice resounded from outside the window. Kill me. Oi, Takakan, get your butt in gear. I am not going to do a female voice, so you guys better not uh, make me. Okay, okay, I'll be right there, kill me. Not wanting to keep Kilmi waiting, I quickly dashed towards the front door to let her in, not even realizing I was still in my pajamas. Ooh, la la. <laughs> Hold a second, Kilmi. I gotta grab my shoes before we head off to school. Really, I never realized our school had a straight uniform or sleepwear policy. Nice jammies, by the way. Did you borrow them for your mom? <laughs> For a moment, my eyes drifted downward and noticed that I was indeed wearing my pajamas. I let out a groan of annoyance and marched back towards my room. Bah, there's nothing to wear, uh, nothing wrong with my jammies. The Golden Knight is famous comic book hero in the West. Besides, not everyone prefers to sleep naked like you. Oh. <laughs> Mumbling those words, I started uh, stripping out my clothes, not particularly minding the presence of a girl behind me. Oh. That, that, that only happened once. You know that very well. It was super hot that night. And jeesh, warn me before you strip naked in front of me, you idiot. You didn't seem to mind it when we were little. Maybe you want me to turn around instead? <laughs> no, stop. Don't make me kick your ass. I decided I had to tease her with uh, uh, enough. I decided I had teased her enough and quickly pulled uh, on my pants, proceeding with the remaining few items of clothes remaining I was uh, suitably dressed for school. Besides, I had a reason for being so distracted. You've been distracted a lot lately. What's going on in that hollow skull of yours? 
It's the upcoming match. I have no idea how anyone can remain calm when an international career is at stake. I would be surprised if I made up enough doomsday scenarios to fill up the apocalypse genre. <laughs> oh right, the judo thing. I'm sure you'll do fine. I've seen some of your matches and you kick butt. And of course, if you're really worried, you could always pray. Pray? What? Don't tell me you don't know. It's one of the school's legends. Apparently, there's some shrine out in the forest that, if you pray to, it brings you good luck. Ichikawa's son said that his sister prayed to it night before her exam, and she got a perfect score. Yay for her! Oh! <laughs> um, a shrine that is uh, to bring good luck. Sounds like bogus to me, but I'm at this point, I'm willing to try anything, I guess. I'll ask uh, Ichikawa-san about the location. I'm not exactly in the mood to get lost in the forest and end up the modern-day Tarzan. <laughs> well, whatever. If you uh, do go looking, at least send me a message to let me know. And will you hurry up? We're going to be late again. This boy, he needs to get his mind on school. A hero is never too early, nor are they too late. They arrive precisely when they're needed. Uh, hmm. Don't let this get to you guys, because if you're working at a job, it's always better to be early than it is to be late. Trust me. <laughs> but for the sake of avoiding detention, let's hurry. <laughs> Good one. Uh, that's a wizard, not a hero genius. How can one person be uh, such a sports nerd and a geek at the same time? Excuse me, I've known many geeks and sports nerds at the same time, people. I mean, one of my co-workers is one of them. I just never understood sports most of the time, actually. Let's continue. Let's not forget the Casanova and Man of the Year cannabis bits. They're important details. <clears throat> okay. I doubt you qualify for either one of them, Pajama Boy. <laughs> anyway, let's get, uh, let us boldly go where uh, everyone has gone before. To school! <laughs> Ugh, nerd. Several hours later. Ten hours later. Thirty hours later. Four years later. <laughs> Later that day, I finally got a chance to talk to my classmates about the location of the shrine that Kiyomi had mentioned earlier. The gym was the last thing on schedule for today, so once people got ready to go home, I approached a guy. Hey, Ichikawa! It's, 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 is it true that your sister discovered some shrine that is said to bring you good luck? Oh ho ho! Let me guess, you want to date her? Well, even though I have to admit she's very attractive, I'm afraid she's already going out with someone. Not to mention you're not her type. Wow. Shotgun. To the face. Ouch. I already got my hands full dealing with Kyomi. You can keep your sister to yourself. Jokes aside, I'm more interested in the shrine. Did she mention where she found it? I didn't know there was anything near the forest, aside from the dojo. Uh, well, uh, she said something about uh, being near a river. It's quite high up, to be honest. I wasn't paying too much attention when she was going on about it. I mean, she was wearing this top, and it was tight, and... Wait, isn't that your sister, dude? Isn't that your sister? Stop. Stop. Seriously, I don't need to hear the details. And I doubt anyone else is interested. So do you know anyone uh, who might have heard about the shrine? Are you uh, guys talking about the lucky shrine out in the forest? The one and only. According to Ichigawa's sister, there's... A sister? Ugh, Ichigawa, what's wrong with you? You disgrace to your family. <laughs> There's supposed to be one near the river. 
I don't know about that, but there's this fiery girl at Asakoa Dojo who knows more about it. Wait, are you talking about Ariyama-sama? Uh, Ariyama-sama, sorry. <laughs> about this uh, tall, ridiculously strong, and super scary. That's the one. Oh, in that case, I believe I can still be of help. Takahiro-kun, I know where that place is. Of course you do. We both do. You just want to tag along, don't you? I don't think Eria Senpai will be appreciate you visiting her with your usual tricks in mind. Do I need to remind you what happened last time you tried to peek at her after she finished practice? Blood, sweat, and tears. Sh sh shut up! I don't peep on the ladies. Uh, that's slander, you know. You sh uh, I should sue you. I would never look upon uh, Ariasama's glorious body in any state of nudity. Oh, so you haven't seen her naked yet. Uh, I've been a bit on the side boob, but the whole I found didn't really let me get a good view of. There we go. Someone call the cops. Ichikawa's a peeping Tom and has confessed. <laughs> I playfully patted Ichikawa's uh, shoulder as I turned around grabbing my bag and I proceed preparing to leave. <coughs> Ooh, pardon me. I'm not used to reading out loud. Thanks for the tip, Ichikawa. I'll let the judge know you were the most helpful during the interrogation. This is unfair. I was con coerced. Coerced? Is that? Okay. I won't say another word until I speak with my lawyer. <laughs> what lawyer? <laughs> 50 million years later. 4 trillion years later. So much later that they had to hire a new one. <laughs> I'm not going with that again. Uh, once school was over, I decided to take my places with a little bit of intel I managed to obtain from my classmates. Uh, if memory serves me right, uh, yes, uh, my uh, senpai would be practicing in the dojo today. Of course, I knew her. She was a judo student j uh, just like myself. But for whatever reason, she has been refusing to compete in any tournament for a while now. Oh, yes, senpai, are you around? I shouted her name as I parked my bike, looking around for any sign of a, the girl. <laughs> Follow the shouts and you'll find her. <laughs> I grinned briefly as I saw Aria uh, seemingly in the middle of practice. A series of motions, almost as if she was fighting an imaginary p opponent. Perhaps that was the perfect opportunity to surprise her a little bit. I snuck closer, making sure to make as little noise as possible before I reached a hand towards her shoulder. Aria! Feeling a hand on her shoulder, Aria reacted. She grabbed a hold of my hand, and with a loud grunt, she shifted her weight, curling and tipping me over her shoulders. Ouch! I didn't have time to brace myself for the impact before I hit the ground like a sack of potatoes. That sounds painful. Yeah! No one seeks up on the great Kinoichi area. Oh, Taka Boy, I didn't realize it was you. I'm sorry, are you okay? Kinoichi, more like a Tasmanian devil. That throw didn't have a shred of mercy in it. There's no mercy in the ring, Taka Boy. Better take... Better that you learn that now than in two weeks' time. Let me guess, you want to do some sparring, don't you? I actually come here to ask you uh, something, but I guess a little sparring wouldn't hurt. Oh, what do you want to ask? We've got all afternoon, and I could do with a bit of a break anyways. Where to start? You used to take part in a big important matches in the past, right? Don't you ever get nervous before going into the ring? Oh, yeah. <laughs> this one time, I got so nervous, I hid uh, in the kitchen cupboards until my dad found me and dragged me out of the car. Of course, that was when I was like eight. <laughs> it doesn't every eight-year-old, especially when going to the doctor. Oh, my God. <laughs> the needles. The needles. Well, obviously, I can't go and hide from uh, my match, but one of my friends made this stupid suggestion that I go and pray or something. Honestly, at this point, I'll do anything to calm my nerves a little. Tucker boy, are you sure about this? You mean the match? 
Of course I am. I've been practicing judo ever since I was an old enough to walk. This is my chance to finally represent my country in the sport I love. Hmm. Aria seemed to think for quite a long time, and all the while tapping her jaw with a finger. Eventually, she snapped her fingers and grabbed a tight hold of me. All right. I'll tell you the way to the shrine, I know. But... It's going to require more than a simple clap of your hands and a bob of your head. You're going to, you need to give something to the shrine, something of value. I guess I'll have to think of something before we get there. Thanks, senpai. I appreciate the help. We? Oh, no, 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 Taka boy. I'm not going with you. I've got training to do. Besides, you've got to take this step yourself. I can draw you a map and show you an easy way to get back here. But you'll be on your own. You're not tagging along? Not even for a little while? Uh, afraid so, talk boy. Let me just grab some paper. I'll draw you a map. After Aria uh, returned, quick preparations were made, and I followed the directions noted on the map. Surprisingly, it wasn't all that far. However, the hint on the how to find my way back in case I got lost was a bit sketchy. Just look down and you'll be able to see the roof of the dojo from anywhere on the hill. The forest near the dojo was the first challenge to overcome. A narrow path coiled along with the trees and nearby was a river Ichikawa's sister had mentioned. I followed Arya's uh, scribbles with a bit of skepticism, but after an hour or so I finally managed... I finally arrived at the supposedly legendary shrine. Okay, well, lords and ladies, that's going to end this episode. So if you guys enjoyed this episode, please leave a big bell like. If you haven't subscribed, come on and come subscribe. I will catch you, lords and ladies, next episode. Bye-bye now and enjoy.